we're going to explain the uh, review sheet for the test on Monday. Start off with methane. Uh, methane, if we do an accounting of the number of valence electrons, we get eight because carbon has four, hydrogen, each hydrogen atom has one. So a total of eight electrons have to be accounted for in the Lewis structure of methane. And that's taken care of by these four bonds, that's eight electrons. So four domains points to a tetrahedral structure. And the way you would portray the tetrahedral structure is to have two bonds in the plane of the board, one coming out at you, one going behind. All the bond angles between them are 109.5. Uh, it could be argued that carbon is more electronegative than hydrogen, as you can see in the activity, uh, the electronegativity series. Carbon is higher up, so it's slightly more electronegative than hydrogen. But even if it was, due to symmetry, uh, the dipoles would cancel. So uh, the methane molecule is nonpolar. Now we look at ammonia. Ammonia has also eight electrons because nitrogen carries five valence electrons. Hydrogen, each hydrogen has one, total of eight electrons to be accounted for. So three of them are in bonding, and the, th the last pair is on the central atom. So we have four bond, four domains, three of them bonding. One is a lone pair, which suggests a pyramidal geometry. And you can draw the molecule more than two different ways. These are the two ways that I like. I prefer. I like to show the lone pair pointing straight up and the, the uh, bonding uh, electrons like the legs of the stool. So I've drawn this one with two of them coming forward, one going be behind. The bond angle is slightly less than 109.5 because of the lone pair uh, compressing it downwards a bit. You can also draw it like this with the lone pair straight up and then the hydrogen, one of the hydrogen atoms in the same plane as the blackboard and then one leg forward, one leg back. This is identical. These two molecules are, are identical. I've just shown the perspective slightly differently in the two drawings. And just be aware of that so that there's no one right way to draw it. Sometimes drawing it one way is preferred in, in some particular argument. Say if you're drawing a mechanism for an organic chemistry reaction, you might want to draw it a certain way or a different way, depending on what, what it is you're trying to prove. Water has also eight valence electrons, one for each hydrogen, six for the oxygen. And so that creates four domains when you draw the Lewis structure. Two of them are bonding, two of them alone pair, which suggests a bent geometry. The bond angle between the hydrogen atoms is 104.5 because there's two lone pairs now instead of one, like in ammonia. Uh, and also water has polar bonds. The oxygen atom is quite a lot more electronegative than uh, hydrogen. You see it appears way up right next to fluorine. So only fluorine is more electronegative than oxygen. So the, the dipole for hydrogen is pointing towards oxygen, and the other hydrogen dipole is pointing towards hydrogen. So the resultant for the whole molecule is pointing out first. Then you have niobium pentabromide. Niobium has five valence electrons. Bromine has seven. There's five bromine. So the total of 40 electrons have to be accounted for. And uh, your preliminary Lewis structure has five domains. All of them are bonding, which suggests trigonal bipyramidal. So one, one bromine atom is drawn up, one down, and then three of them are equatorial. So the bond angle between the equatorial bromines is 120, and the bond angle between the axial bromines and the equatorial bromine is 90 and then 180 between the two eggshell ones. You can draw it this way with two bromines pointing out and one pointing behind, or you can draw uh, this way, which suggests a T-shape, but it's not a T-shape because the other bromine atoms are present as well, one coming forward, one going back. These two molecules are identical. You're just describing, uh, you're just drawing them in slightly different ways. Continuing. Sulfur tetrafluoride. There are six valence electrons in uh, sulfur, seven in fluorine, total is 34, which gives you five domains, four of them bonding, one of them is a lone pair, which means it's a um, seesaw shape. Here are the two legs of the seesaw. Here's the plank of the seesaw. And then I put the lone pair, as you can imagine, somebody standing on the seesaw. And then you can see clearly that it has sort of sawhorse shape or seesaw, whatever you want to call it. They have different names for it, but seesaw is what we like to call it. 
Now, if you draw the, the polarity of the bonds, you see the fluorine atoms. These two fluorine atoms will are opposed, so the, the dipoles cancel. But in the case of these two fluorine atoms, this one, the dipole is pointing that way, and in that one, the, the, the dipole is pointing that way, so the resultant dipole is pointing that way. So there is a dipole in this molecule, so the bonds are both the bonds and the molecule itself are predicted to be polar. In uh, boron trifluoride, you end up having two lone pairs. So that's five domains, three of them bonding, two of them lone pairs, and that suggests a T shape. And again, uh, these two fluorine atoms, dipoles, will cancel out. So there's one pulling downwards, there's one pulling up. So these two cancel, but this one has nothing to cancel it. So there is a uh, resultant dipole in that direction for this molecule. Okay, now we can uh, do a couple more examples that are on the sheet. two, I believe, no, there's four more, xenon difluoride. Xenon difluoride. Let's, let's account how many valence electrons there are. Xenon is a noble gas. It's going to have eight valence electrons. Fluorine has seven, and there are two fluorine atoms. So 14 plus eight gives you 22 electrons to account for. We'll draw xenon as the central atom. That uses up 12 electrons. 12 plus the two bonds gives you 14, 16, 18, 20, 22. The remaining electrons are placed on the central atom. So that gives you five domains. Three of the, uh, two of them bonding, and three lone pairs. And that would point to a linear molecule, but which is an archetype of the trigonal bipyramidal geometry. So when you have five things attached to a central atom, that's reminiscent of a trigonal bipyramidal geometry. But because three of those are lone pairs, the molecule is going to actually be linear. It's going to look like this. One fluorine up, one down, and then you can draw one lone pair in the same plane as the fluorine atoms, one coming out at you, and one going behind. And the reasons for that I have uh, described in your notes. So you have a look at that. Why? Because it's not one. It's not the only shape you can draw for xenon difluoride. You can you can draw shapes where one of the fluorine atoms is equatorial, or both of them equatorial. So why does the molecule choose to have this shape? You should know why, and I've given you a question in your notes where we, I described the precise reasons for that. In your opinion, is this molecule polar? Would it be a polar molecule? Or is there symmetry there? Can you draw a line of symmetry through the fluorine atoms? You can actually, because you can split the fluorine atoms. If you draw the line of symmetry such that you can split the, uh, the lone pairs as well, so polar. this molecule is nonpolar. Even though it's got polar bonds, arguably, uh, the dipoles would be pointed this way and that way, so they would cancel. So, this, due to symmetry, the, non the molecule is actually nonpolar. Sulfur hexafluoride is our next example. Let's count how many electrons there are in the Lewis structure. So you understand now that if you don't know how to draw the Lewis structure, you're dead in the water when it comes to drawing the Vesper, to use the Vesper theory. You need to know what the Lewis structure looks like to be able to suggest 
the geometry of the molecule. So there are six electrons in sulfur, uh, seven in fluorine, and there are six fluorine atoms. So uh, eight times six is 48. 40 electrons have to be accounted for in the Lewis structure. So let's stick six fluorine atoms on a sulfur indiscriminately. We're not even going to suggest any geometry at the, at, uh, at the beginning. And when we draw it this way, we find that we can disperse all the remaining electrons to complete the uh, octets for fluorine. So that uses up uh, six times eight. Sorry, six times six is 36. And then 12 more for the bond, so it's 48 electrons. So all, all the electrons, all the valence electrons are accounted for. You have six domains, all bonding. And that suggests an octahedral geometry. Octahedral. So you draw that. This sulfur atom is a central atom. One fluorine up, one down. I'd like to draw two fluorines coming out of the plane of the blackboard and two of them going behind. And that shows, you can imagine this sulfur atom as the center of a cube and the fluorines would be touching the middle of each face of the cube. And that's an octahedral geometry. The next is iodine pentafluoride and xenon tetrafluoride. Those are all the last two examples I want to work with you. We'll go right to the bell if we have to. Yeah. Oh, this would be nonpolar because of, again, symmetry, yeah. The bonds are, non, uh, are polar, but the molecule itself is nonpolar. Bonds are polar, but dipoles cancel. Due to symmetry, and the molecule is non-polar. Okay. So let's uh, erase this one. Make room. Next example we want to look at is iodine pentafluoride, I F5. Iodine has seven valence electrons, so does fluorine, and there's five fluorines. Six times seven is 42 electrons to account for. So let's draw your central iodine atom. Put on the five fluorine atoms as satellite atoms, and then disperse six electrons on each fluorine atom and see how many lone pairs, see how many electrons are used up. If there are any extra ones left, we put them on the central atom. So uh, five times six gives you 30, plus 10 gives you 40. You got two more, so we'll put them on the central atom. That's six domains. One of them, uh, sorry, five are bonding, and one lone pair. What does that give you? Square pyramid. Square based pyramid. So square pyramidal. And we'll put the iodine in the middle. It doesn't matter where you put the lone pair. And then the the four the five fluorine atoms one will be at the top of the pyramid. Two will be coming out at you. Two will be going behind. And then I'd like to just put the lone pair at the bottom here. So you see it's suggestive of a pyramid shape. If you were to draw lines between the fluorine atoms, it would look like a square-based pyramid. And this would be a polar or non-polar? It's polar because there's no symmetry for this fluorine atom. There's nothing to oppose this fluorine atom, so the dipole here would persist. It would go up. All the other ones would cancel. So these two pull this way, so that, that creates 
uh, a resultant dipole between them, and these two pull this way, which creates a resultant dipole between them, so these two resultant dipoles cancel. This one doesn't, so the molecule has a dipole pointing out. The last one. Five minutes left. It's xenon tetrafluoride. eight electrons, fluorine has seven, and there's four of them. Total is 28 plus eight, or 36 electrons to account for. Let's draw four fluorine atoms attached to xenon, and then give them each an octet. Four times six is 24, 26, 28, 30, 32. 34, 36. That's again six domains, four of them bonding, two are lone pairs, which suggests square planar. Square planar. Professor Angelo, Professor Angelo, there is uh, something to do with front To draw a square planar, I like to put the uh, lone pairs one above and one below. out at you, and one going behind, or two going behind. And there's your square planar. Uh, this one has polar or non-polar? Non-polar. It's non-polar because this resultant opposes this resultant dipole and they cancel. Or you can draw them this way. The one going behind the plane of the backboard, one coming forward, those two would cancel. So all the because of symmetry, the dipoles cancel. The molecule is nonpolar. All right, so have a have a look at those videos for Vesper theory. Page to the beginning. Start with from the beginning. You have to. I think the grand total is about an hour of viewing, and it'd be a good review for you.